Five Morning Show. Now to the burning issue for the moment, uh, the Ondo election, governorship election, Ondo 2020, as it was tagged, it's come now, and um, if you like, it's gone, because the results are out, and we have a winner, the incumbent governor uh, 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 is re-elected. And uh, the interesting thing about that, from reports, that um, the three senatorial districts of the state fielded candidates. So the state was entirely represented in the race. And now we have a winner. Uh, joining me to look at the lessons from the Undo election, Undo 2020, uh, two public affairs analysts, uh, Clinton O'Meary, welcome to our studios, and uh, Nana Otu, you're welcome. Pleasure is mine also, thank you. Okay, so it, it, people say we are making progress. Uh, another peaceful election, um, INEC, you know, proving it's worth again. Uh, what's your take? Do you agree with that? We're making progress in our electoral process? Looking at uh, where we are coming from, the violence that has always uh, marred our, our elections in the past. And then uh, I think there's an improvement okay. from what we have had in the past. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. No, no, too. Yeah, really, there's something to smile home about, something to, uh, to take home and say, okay, fine, we are, we are, we are moving forward. Mm. Uh, um, in even countries within within our zone, within our African zone, you, you discover that elections are really just like normal course of action. You know, the people walk, walk, walk out from their offices, do their, their, cast their vote, get back to work and all of that. But in Nigeria, each time you mention that, including local government elections, yes. there was one in my local government in my state. You know, there was, my state had a local government election not long ago. It was still more like, more like people, getting prepared for a big war, you know, a, a mini world war. And that has been, that has been uh, the burden of our, of our uh, electoral process in Nigeria. That was uh, Edo, uh, set a standard, you know, and uh, a, couple of, a couple of things we have done, including the transmission of results. Uh, Ondo came up, and uh, to some extent, you know, I net built on the, uh, they added a little more blocks on what they did at, uh, at the door. So there is some improvement, something mm. to share, but, but we are not yet there. We're not yet there. We are not yet there because there was massive vote buying. Okay. In massive vote buying in Saturday's election. Mm. Um, I, I belong to a, a, a group that uh, we had our people there who monitored the election. It was, it was terrible. You know. Okay. So those are some other areas we want to look at. But in the area of violence, there were still pockets of violence. Yes. Pockets of violence, you know, here and there, but not as what we used to have um, uh, some, some couple of months back. Okay. So let's look at that vote buying, as we say. Or that means there's vote, uh, vote selling too. Yes. Because if somebody is buying, somebody, somebody is selling. selling. Now, if we buy and sell, and yet have a peaceful election. What is bad in that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> because what we're interested in is the peaceful outcome. Yes. So if you're going to buy and you're going to sell, yes. but in the end, we have a very clean and uh, fair result. Uh, is that a plus or minus? It's, look, it's, Ambrose, it, yes. maybe I interject here. Okay. Is that uh, there, is some, there, there is something about it, that there is vote buying mm. it implies now that votes are uh, that our votes count okay that is the first the first thing that uh, that struck me yeah. that people politicians are prepared to buy votes means that gone perhaps uh, gone are the days where uh, go and vote uh, they manipulate do whatever they want to do good. and they fail to go to court good you know, but, uh, but but if I'm able, if I'm prepared to pay for to pay five thousand naira or seven thousand naira for a single vote, mm -hmm. it means that every single vote counts. Well, count. So uh, it is getting close to that point. But we still need, we still need to uh, see if we can do a little a little more better than what we uh, what we are currently doing. Mm. The vote buying should not be a norm. I mean, it shouldn't for any reason come in at all as part of our consider our our consideration in, the, in, the, in our political process. It okay. shouldn't just come in uh, anywhere. It's criminal. Mm. Yes. And you know what? 
uh, we, have, uh, we have photographs of these things happening within vicinities and within areas where you have the police, you have you know, party agents and all of that. People move in there. And they have learned, the, they have become very brazen about it. Because you are given money and you must, you must come back with evidence to show that you, you actually for did, uh, you, you, you did the need for. Okay. You know. So the, the, uh, before you collect money, the, you are told you must bring, come up with an evidence. Something to show that you did, you did what, uh, what we are paid to do. Mm. You know. So to me, it's, uh, it takes a whole lot. It, take, it, it takes a whole lot of people can mortgage their four years for 5,000 naira. Mm. Because what you've just done is you've given somebody, you've given him a card blank. Do whatever you want to do. You know, it's like the kind of prayer we, 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 we say in church, I'm a Catholic anyway. The, uh, uh, Lord, uh, I am yours, do with me what, what, what you I will. You know. <laughs> so it, that's basically what, uh, uh, what we are saying indirectly. Yes. Okay, do you agree with that view? Uh, well, the, 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 it, it's something that is actually very, very sad in our, in our system that uh, people have to sell their, their mm. phones. And um, uh, politicians have to influence people to, to, to cast their vote in their own favor. Mm. Um, I think we should begin to work towards you know, getting rid of this very ugly, ugly uh, situation that is coming up. Because uh, we have moved from balance snatching like he said, yes. when we, you know, the, 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 our votes didn't count. Mm -hmm. But now we are moving towards where our votes, our votes now counts. And then uh, they are looking at ways to buy you over, buy your vote, to get you to, to support them, to mm -hmm. give them what they are looking for. So, but um, it's an ugly trend. And because it becomes the highest bidder exactly, now. Exactly, because uh, what happens when they re the, the candidates of their choice, candidate that will deliver, eventually you know uh, uh, it's unable to have the financial muscle to buy all the votes mm. and then that person being credible will lose the election that's right so and then uh, this is not good it's not healthy for our system so and uh, we have to do something INEC has to do something against this uh, ugly trend that is being uh, set by our politicians okay so maybe they need a, le a special legislation for that that's correct. but, but uh, do you agree too that uh, those who sell their votes uh, would you respect belong to a class? Which means it could be tied to poverty, don't you it think? It is, so? it is, absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's no two ways about it. Mm. Because when you're hungry and then uh, you don't get to see these people once, once they are elected, yes. the only thing is that once you have the opportunity of uh, you know, getting anything getting from anything them, from you, them you, grab you, you, you grab it with your two hands. So That's exactly we what have to deal with doing. poverty first. Yeah, it's twofold. Okay. It's twofold. It's just not, you, you, you wouldn't lay all the blame at the doorstep of uh, poverty alone. All right. Poverty, fine, uh, you know, is part of it. But at the bottom line, really, is that we don't seem, we don't seem to understand what, um, what politics is all about. We don't seem to, to understand what party politics should be. We are talking of situations where the two parties we are looking at are just barren in terms of ideology. Barren completely. You wouldn't say, you wouldn't say, pick up, pick up the U.S., for, for instance, the, the, the Democrats, you know it would be almost impossible for somebody to migrate from the, the Democrat to, to, to the Republican. Yeah. Almost impossible. Yes. Because the, 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 the there ideology are entrenched is there. Ideologies, entrenched yes. the ideology is there. But what we have, what we have are our best platforms. Mm. Our best platforms. platforms and these platforms, registered platforms. These yes. platforms look alike. Right. Yeah. <laughs> registered platforms that look alike. Yes, yes. And so you see, uh, uh, look at the funny situation at, uh, uh, that played out at uh, uh, those states. Yes. Uh, four years ago, mm. Obaseke APC, yes. and uh, he poured all the invectives on PDP. Yes. And uh, 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 Isaiah Yamu was uh, was APC. Yes. Then you know he had uh, all the all the bad language to throw. Suddenly, it, it, the switch comes. Nothing gave. <laughs> nothing really gave. Yes. Uh, you know. But at the switch camp, yes. the other one became PDP of another one became APC. APC. You know, uh, 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 there, there isn't. There wasn't that backing, that ideological backing to it. Mm. So why we blame poverty? You know, for people. Uh, uh, you also take it down to uh, 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 our politics. Mm -hmm. If ideas were canvassed, cool. if, uh, if, if people came up with programs, with manifestos, and canvassed those manifestos, it, it would be a different thing. Yeah. You know that you are voting for A because of this. Mm -hmm. But for uh, myself and uh, any other person on the street, 
these guys are the same. Yes. So uh, uh, I don't know. Same of same uh, same of the same thing. You just you wouldn't know. And what you just said now is even supporting vote buying That's because yeah. you are coming to us. We don't know you for anything. Yes. So give me something before I can yes. vote for you. Yes. That's yes. what I'm getting. That's what the people ask. Because you have no ideology to sell to That's me. Right. You are the same thing. So let the one who can pay pay for my vote. Is that not putting us in more difficult? Basically, situation? that is we are we are worse off for it all. Yes. You know we are worse off. Um, you know, our inability to hold our, our uh, uh, the political class accountable, accountable. for their action yes. to a large extent determine what happens down the road during election, uh, elections. Yes. You know? Because it's almost impossible. Uh, take a, a, an ordinary legislator in the House of Assembly. It's almost impossible to recall him. At the, as soon as he's testing, as soon as uh, after the election, he is either, either thinking of the next election, trying to put money together to enable him buy enough votes uh, to, uh, you know, you know, uh, in, in the next coming election. He has forgotten that this is uh, that uh, he has a social a social contract yes. with the people that gave him the mandate. So that that idea of social contract is just not there, you know. And for for crying out loud, he spent money. He has to recoup. He yeah. has to recoup that money. You know. There are lots of, as you said, we are making progress, but we need a lot yes. to be done yes. still in our, in our electoral processes to make it better. Okay, uh, you, are join, you are listening to us and you want to join the conversation. We are looking at lessons from Ondo 2020. Please call. Uh, the lines are there. Uh, call and uh, share your thoughts with us. Let's look at one significant development there, the transmission of results straight from the polling unit to the uh, national listing. Uh, people have applauded that because if we know what uh, we scored at uh, Odo, for example, you can't change it there. And if you change it there, we can cry out from here. So that's not what you announced here. I think that's a major development. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Ambrose, I agree with you. See, mm. but we, uh, it could still come. Uh, um, it could still come a lot better than what, what we've seen. But we are happy with that development. Okay. Do you know what? Um, here at you know, what really happened uh, is that. After, after, the, uh, after the elections there, papers are written, party agents signed off between the, uh, yeah, between the polling, uh, unit. This polling unit and the, the initial coalition yes, initial center. Coalition center. Word, yeah. You discover that what is presented is not what left the, the unit. That's right. There are instances where you have the figure from your own uh, um, uh, polling unit. By the time you get to the, 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 the first coalition center, you, you see the figures differ yes uh, the uh, massage so but in this in this case now mm -hmm. uh something akin something close to what should be the idea thing now happens i i as, as results are announced and pasted at the unit it is also transmitted directly to the uh, local government collection centers and so on and so forth you know so making uh, making to some extent the need for uh, the need for one to make sure that he wins at the pulling boat that that is uh, that uh, you know that desire to make sure what uh, that you win at the polling booth, making it very very imperative. Otherwise, the the idea of writing results, uh, the, I mean the, the era of writing results appear to be fading out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but we could still do a lot better. That is why people are asking the uh, uh, electoral law that was not signed by Mr. President contained all of this. I recall that there were, there were instances at the court where um, uh, INEC openly said that they didn't, uh, that the law does not support electronic transmission. Yeah. Yeah, but I think now, um, I don't know how they want to get, get around it. Like somebody jokingly said yesterday, well, uh, the governor has been re-elected by the electorate, uh, but we still need to wait for Supreme Court to, to elect, the, <laughs> you know, to vote. The Supreme Court hasn't voted. Until the Supreme Court votes, then yes. we, can, we can say, <laughs> ah, it's, it's all over. So, but if we do these things right, there wouldn't be uh, this, this problem we keep having every time. At the end of every election, uh, the loser would, uh, the, the guy that was declared the loser will never congratulate the other person. Mm. And uh, the other person will openly tell you, go to court. Yes. If you don't like it, go to court. You know. So, uh, with things going, they were, with things improving this way, 
one uh, rascality by way of uh, ballot smashing and uh, gunshot and all of that, those aspects are, uh, are, are appear, appear to be fading out. Yeah. Then we now have transmission also, uh, results transmitted almost instantly to various, uh, you know, so things are actually uh, shaping up. Okay. You know. Yeah. So we hope uh, those who were paid in the past to snatch ballot boxes and, you know, mix up the figures will find a different job because if they create a new uh, <laughs> platform in the yes. electoral system, we're going to have a problem. Yep. Okay. And uh, uh, let's also hope because uh, from what we see now, if we can freely transmit the results of the polling unit without interference or threats, then we're, we're near. So the, the possibility of uh, the, the security agencies being there must be emphasized. Yes. Because if you want to announce the result from the polling unit and there's a threat, mm -hmm. you know the whole thing will change again. Yes. So the security agencies have to be alert and make sure that that is, uh, um, uh, is upheld. Now let's look at the spread. As we said, the three senatorial districts fielded candidates. And yet the incumbent emerged a winner. That tells us something about that state, isn't it? It's like nobody was specifically fighting for his own candidate or his own district. Uh, is that not a plus two? It is, it is actually uh, an added advantage because uh, when you look at uh, the political spread of uh, the, the candidates, yeah, so from the three senatorial districts, we have a candidate. Yes. And that is good for the people. It means, uh, okay, let's do this, guys. This is our state. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody is being excluded. That's it. It's an open we field. We are all represented. Yes. Exactly. So it's an open field for everybody. So, and then uh, he emerged, probably because the people say, okay, let's give him another four years. And then uh, not because uh, the other candidates didn't have the same opportunity that he had, although he was an incumbent governor. But then, uh, you know, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yes. Okay, let's hear from Ismailer, from our papa. Hello, Ismailer. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, let me first of all appreciate Super Screen for bringing up technical issues uh, for, say, uh, for, say, national issues each and every blessed day. Thank I you. I really appreciate the entire uh, crew and the management of Super Screen. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Let me go straight to the point. Thank uh, you. We are talking about lesson we learned from Edo, I mean from on those days. Yeah. Let me take us a little bit back. Uh, in the 2019 election, we experienced what we call voters apathy, which I was thinking the entire umpire, that is the INEC, and the technical stakeholders will do the needful things to avoid this voter apathy. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we are still on that issue. Look at what happened in Edo State, I mean, in Edo States. The accredited voters and the kind of vote castings is something that worries me, not the winning team or the aspect of the proceeding of the election. Yeah. If you ask me, I will say, uh, we are still on minor minorities that are voting. If you cast the total vote cast and the total accredited voters is something to worry. Now come to Edo State, almost about 1,500,000. If you match together all the total votes, the winner win about 290 something. The second loser came with 190 something. The total candidate of 16 candidates, about 200 something. So all together, is not up to 700. Where are the rest of the 900 vote accredited voters? What happened today? Yeah. So it's, okay. to me, minority are still voting. What can we do to mitigate this menace in the next coming election? Are we still going to continue in this issue and claiming that we are into democratic after when minorities are coming out to elect? The answer is no. So there are so many things we need to learn. I thought between 2019 and now, INEC should have come with something. Look at what is going on. The Peace Committee. The Peace Committee is uh, supposed to be doing its work before the election and even after the election. Why is it that people are not coming out to vote? Because people are afraid. 
Why are they afraid? The kind of campaign that is going on before the election is make them afraid. You understand? So people are losing hope. Shall we keep on continue on this present predicament and claiming that we are into democracy? No. Something has to be done. I remain Ismaila from Apapa. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ismaila. That's a, a very strong point raised there. The, the voter apathy, the low turnout. Th that's interesting. Thank you so much, Ismaila. You're watching uh, U45 Morning Show. Join us in this conversation. The lines are there on your screen. Please join us. Um, he, he raised the point. Very, very, yeah, he, very good. He made a very valid point. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Uh, um, Edo, Edo returned 25%. 25% uh, of registered voters yes. with voting uh, uh, with INEC, INEC voters card showed up. So 25% of eligible voters decided who becomes the government. Yeah. And that was on though I've not seen the I've not seen the stats, mm. but I am sure it, 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 it couldn't be any better. Yeah. He uh, he related the situation to to the fact that people are frightened. You know, people are frightened. Beginning from the ele electionary, even during the electionary, you see what happened. Mm. You know, so you just discover that most people who consider themselves um, uh, responsible enough uh, find it difficult. You know, to go out where they could be, uh, their heads could be broken. They could, uh, you know, the uh, the hoodlums could come to carry ballot boxes and so on and so forth. You know. For as long as there is that fear, yes. and I'm not even too sure that uh, the level of policing we get is making things uh, any better for, for the electorate. Where you are told that 35,000 uh, policemen and, and other security agencies will be, will, be, uh, will be on ground, you know. You already see a militarized area. The mm -hmm. army will be there. So it's more like a war going to war. So uh, people, some people would say, uh, what is my own? Uh, you know, I just, uh, uh, in, in Nigerian language, they say, uh, le, le, uh, let me come and, uh, come and die for them. No, not me. <laughs> you know, so that's uh, perhaps the situation. So uh, for as long as we have this very tense situation during elections, I mentioned a while ago that in some climes, people walk out from the office as we are here. We just yes. step down, cast our vote and come back, you know. And so on. So until we get there, uh, INEC, like you said, has a whole lot to do. And even we, most importantly, the man you see on the mirror, each time you stand on the, on the dressing mirror to look, whoever you see on the dressing mirror really needs to begin to look inward. Mm. What, what is wrong with me? When all of us do that, we would have come up with a situation where we have uh, we develop some measure of confidence in our, in our system and build our system the way it should be. Okay. We have, um, from what we have here, uh, APC pulled 292,830. Yeah. Uh, PDP had 195,791, and ZLP had 69. That's about 557,748. And they had the million plus two yeah. registered. Registered vote. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, uh, let's say, 50% because uh, the figures on top of the million now, we don't know, but we have 50.5, uh, 557. So if we have, uh, uh, let's take 50% of the registered voters, right? Yeah. Uh, it may not be up to, because I know there's a fraction on top yeah. of the million something. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, because in the individual uh, um, awards, the turnout, according to the electoral officers during the election, the turnout was high. Uh, unusually high, you know, okay. higher than before. Some were recording 98% turnout, okay. some were recording 80% and so on and so forth. Okay. So if we have 50% of voter, registered voters, is that a pass mark? 50%? 50%? <laughs> <Wow>. mm. <laughs> <laughs> because all over the world, yes. I, I remember the last election in the US, uh, it was a 60% turnout, I think. 60% turnout. Yes. Even as civilized as yes. the US is. 60% yeah. of voters. So 40% yes. stayed out. Yes. So I, I think there's still room for improvement. Mm. Uh, Fifty percent, yes, yes, but we can do more than mm. better than that. Um, uh, you you don't want to be left out in uh, deciding who is in charge, uh, who takes care of uh, the affairs in your state or in in the country. You ha have to participate. We we'll, uh, we have to do more to encourage people to go out and vote. Vote. Mm -hmm. If you go out and vote, you are actually exercising your 
your power mm. to decide who is in charge. Yeah. Okay, but you know that some people register in this country because somehow they believe the, the, the card, the voter card, yes. may be used for something else. And so they want to have it. Not that they want to go out there and line up, especially the rich. Especially the rich. Do you see them going out really to line up and we vote? We have it's, to. It's the peasants, it's the you know, average Nigerians, the civil servants who come out to vote. That is the record we have. Yeah, Andrew, the, orientation, yeah? the, the orientation is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like Ismail did uh, uh, suggest, uh, voter education is so very important. Uh, unfortunately, those who know in, in our own situation, mm -hmm. those who know are the, are the people that are not, know, yes. are not really. So <laughs> how are you going to educate them? <laughs> <laughs> the, the environment doesn't seem to be conducive for to, to go out during the election. The hype, the, the tension, uh, uh, the, the tension takes a life of its own. You, you almost see tension walking on the street. Mm. You know, so most people would say, ah, let me just keep away. Yes. You know, let me just stay away. And to a large extent, their fears are not built on nothing. Their fears are real. Those fears are real because by the time you, uh, by the time the elections are over, even as peaceful as, uh, as the kind we had over the weekend and some three weeks ago, as peaceful as they appeared to be, they were still pockets of pockets of skirmishes yeah. here yeah. and there. Yeah. Uh, and no, uh, no right thinking human being would want to accept, except if you uh, there's something immediately there for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, like that's where poverty, the poverty angle comes, comes in. in. Yeah, but at, uh, frankly speaking, uh, the, there is an improvement. There is a gradual improvement. One, if uh, the, uh, if people begin to realize that, that their votes count, they will go to cast that vote. Yeah. There were, at the time, it became obvious that the votes are meaningless. That's true. Uh, so know, people yes. were not so people The votes are yes. meaningless. They will just go line up, waste their time, and, and so on. At the end of the day, uh, all the uh, all the bracada brac comes in, and the, the courts, and so on and so forth. You know, people smile to the banks and stuff. You know. So, but I, for, uh, I, as we begin to build confidence on the process, you see a, a, a lot more people coming out to vote. Yeah. Mm. That confidence has to be uh, built, and it's important. And do you think a time will come when Nigerians will begin to ask the, the politicians, look, give us your manifesto. Tell us what you will do for us. Mm -hmm. That's during the campaign. So yes. we'll insist. Mm -hmm. Not just vote this party, vote this party. What is this party going to do for us? Do you think we'll ever come to that level where we'll demand your program, your manifesto? What are you promising us? Or what, yes. Do you think we'll come to that? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, definitely. Um, because uh, what I saw before the election last weekend has always been what it has been in the past. Like, you know, the campaign rallies, you know, you have uh, there are people who come there to dance and uh, musicians who come there to entertain. Mm -hmm. And then this is not what we should be doing. What we should be doing is tell us what you have for us, Good. what you are going to do. But uh, I think we are gradually moving. In the past, we didn't used to have a, a, a debate. But now we are moving towards having debates. I yeah. watched Akre Dolu and uh, the other polit uh, 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 pa um, politicians from mm. the two other political parties. There's the ZDF and then PDP. Yeah. And then uh, the, the, there was this discussion on uh, how, what and what you have for us. Mm. And then uh, it wasn't perfect, but at least we are moving from well, there, and so then we the, can we, do we, a we lot should carry that from the TV screen or radio studios to the venue of the campaign Very now. Very well, we should. Tell and not people. just having people come around, yes, and, and, and then uh, we'll start dancing and all that, all that stuff. And we should begin to tell people, yes. yes. You know, we're always going after the other party. We should be able to stand there and then say, oh, look, this is what I'm going to do. And then so that the people can take note of all these things and then be able to hold you accountable. accountable. Well, the moment we start holding our politicians accountable because there's lack of accountability. Yeah. Once we are able to do that, then we are, we are on our way. It's not like the, the question of accountability, do you see the press playing a major role there? If we're able to get politicians to state what, they, what they're going to do before they get into office, the press has a lot to do there, to remind them, you said this, how far? Yeah, this, uh, 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 that, should be a, that should be our national habitat. Mm. That should just be our home, our national habitat. The constitution provides for that. In fact, the, uh, uh, the, the media is the, 
apart from apart from the three other arms of government, is the next other arm that that had, that got a mention in the constitution. That's right. You know, so we have a clearly defined role to play in all of this. Um, I, I just wouldn't know how we are how we are to some extent not not where we should be in, mm. in, in, in delivering that role. I don't know how, how we come about. Because there are problems yeah. within the media too in that aspect. Yes. A, a, a yes. governor pays you yes. to take a special report on a state. Yes. You, you can't report the bad side. You can't. <laughs> You've got to present it the way yeah. you want it. Yes, right. That's a major challenge for the media. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, it, boils down, it boils down to what the man on the street refers to as uh, uh, brand envelope journalism. Mm -hmm. you know, and which also perhaps perhaps reflects the society where we live. Yeah. You know, the, society, the society is such that uh, we, uh, we are all judged based on what, what financial value the next person thinks we, we possess. You know? And so like you say, somebody comes up, you, uh, you, 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 you do a duty tour, you take a duty tour, or, or, or a special project duty tour of your state. At the end of the day, you know, Either the press secretary or somebody, somebody within the corridors of uh, of power corners you and completely influences what you present to the public. Mm. At the end of the day, that accountability is not there. Nobody is taking record because we should be taking record. The yes. media should be taking records of this is what you said. Hold you accountable to that. Mm. Somewhere down the road, present that to you as yes. you know, uh, flash it, yes. flash it to you. This is what. This is where yes. you are coming from. Yes. Uh, but uh, most most of our rallies, sincerely speaking, are completely empty. They are made sure entertainment. You see people dance around. Uh, 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 even I don't know. I don't, just don't know. Mm. Listen to the pop, uh, listen to them from the podium. You don't get to hear anything reasonable. You know the health issues are not discussed. Education issues are not discussed. Nothing. You know, uh, to show that re-electionarism is, go is going mm. on. So, for as long as those issues are not dropped, there is nothing to hold anybody accountable on. Okay, we have to end this here because we've got to look at uh, uh, the other development we have now: uh, the scrapping of uh, FSAs. That uh, is an issue that has raised so much dust. Now, the federal government has said. No more of that outfit, but people are doubting. Is it just in words or in deeds? Let's look closely at that development in a moment. Don't go away.